Life like a wayfarer journeying Like a stranger on his way back And there will be a voice from the heavens confirming his identity that he is the Mahdi. And the Mahdi will stay around in different narrations either for 70 years or for 8 years or for 9 years. At least 7, maximum 9. And he will be a ruler. The Prophet said, Hatta yamlekul Araba. He will be a ruler of the Arabs. Uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, his mother Chirag Bibi, his father Ghulam Murtaza, Imam Mahdi, his name Muhammad bin Abdullah, Isa alayhi salam, Isa ibn Maryam. No, no similarity whatsoever. The real Mahdi has yet not come. When he will come, he will come, the world will know him. When Isa alayhi salam comes, the world will know him. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد ما دي برادزنا رسبكت الألدز The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم among many other things has prophesied the coming of a man who has been referred to as the Mahdi and this has been referred so much in the Hadith that it forms a part of the aqidah of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah that we believe and we, we are expecting the appearance or the coming of this personality. We believe in the return of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, that Isa alayhi salam will return, but the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam described this other personality who has been referred to as the Mahdi. <coughs> The Shias are expecting him, the Sunnis are expecting him and on, on the basis of such expectations Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani he also made claims to be that Mahdi but inshallah we will discuss that briefly and Imam Mahdi will be the first major sign of the coming of the day of Qiyamah there are many signs which have been mentioned with regards to Qiyamah, many of the signs are referred to as minor signs. Minor signs are those which will set in and increase in intensity over a period of time. And major signs are those which will take place instantly. The appearance of the Mahdi, it will be overnight. When he appears, everybody will know. Minor signs are like building lofty buildings. In the time of the Prophet wasallam, they used to live in simple huts and but we see his, over a period of time in, uh, historically the, the height of the buildings has been increasing to now mashallah in the Dubai Tower uh, is the biggest, is the highest building in the world presently previously the Twin Towers and in London, Canary Wharf and so on and uh, but the height has been increasing gradually over time. The Prophet said, Yaksurul Jahal, ignorance will prevail. People haven't become ignorant overnight, but the level of knowledge has been decreasing. Yaksurul Zina, Zina has been increasing gradually. So these are all minor signs. Major signs, they will happen instantly. One day Imam Mahdi won't be there, the next day the world will know him. One day Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will not be here, but when he comes down, the world will know him. The Jal won't be around, he is around, but he won't, uh, he is being kept hidden. When he appears, he will appear instantly and then the world will know him. So these are known as major signs and the appearance of the Mahdi is a first of the major signs of Qiyamat. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in his uh, ahadith and many many ahadith and many sahih ahadith, has described him in extensive detail. And some of the things which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned, and uh, the Prophet said that he will be rajulum min ahli bayti, and the Mahdi will be from the descendants of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, min wulde Fatima from the offspring of the Prophet sallallahu through Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. Now the Fatima had two sons, Hassan and Hussein. And 
The Shias believe that the Mahdi is the twelfth Imam. They believe in a concept which is uh, which is uh, Imamat. They believe there were twelve Imams. As Ali was the first, followed by Hassan, then Hussein. Then they believe that once Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu became, became Imam, then Imamat was transferred to his progeny. Then all the subsequent Imams was were in his offspring, from Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, then his son. Ali bin Hussein, who was also known as Zainul Abidin, then Hazrat Zainul Abidin, son Muhammad, who is known as Muhammad Baqir, and the Shias refer to him as Imam Baqir. Then Imam Baqir had a son; his name was Jafar. He is referred to as Imam Jafar Sadiq. Then his son uh, Musa Kazim. Then Ali Raza, Muhammad Taqi, Ali Naqi, and then Hassan Askari, and then finally the twelfth Imam. They believe that when he was born from the offspring of Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, then he vanished, and then uh, he will reappear before the end of time. So they believe that the twelfth Imam is Imam Mahdi, and he is from the sons of Hazrat Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu. But there is a narration in Abu Dawood in which Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Ibn. When referring to Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Ibn hadha Sayyid, and this is my son, he is a leader. Kama sammahu nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just as the Prophet called him Sayyid as well. Whenever, on many occasions, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he would refer to Imam Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Ibn hadha Sayyid, the son of mine is a leader, and because of him and, and at his hands, Allah will unite two large factions of this ummah wala allahu yuslihu bihi bayna ta'ifatayn azimatayn min al-muslimin two large factions two large groups of muslims will be united at his hands and similarly ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said when referring to hasan radiyallahu anhu ibn hadha sayyid kama sammahu an-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sayakhruj min sulbihi rajulan la yusamma bismi nabiyyikum and from his progeny the progeny of Hassan, the progeny of Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Allah will raise a man and whose name will be the same as the name of your prophet and يَمْلَأُ الْأَرْضَ عَدْلًا وَقِسْتًا كَمَا مُولِيَتْ ظُلْمًا وَجَوْرًا Who will then fill this world with justice and goodness as the world would have been filled with oppression and tyranny. So the Mahdi, he will be from the descendants of the Prophet sallallahu through Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, but through Hazrat Hassan. The Shias believe he will be from the offspring, or he is, as they believe, the twelfth Imam who vanished, and then will reappear before the end of time, and, and, and at his hand the world will be filled with justice. Uh, as it would have been filled with oppression and tyranny. But Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we believe that he will be from the offspring of Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And there is a, ulama have given a very subtle uh, reason for that. That because Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when after the martyrdom of Hazrat Ali, he was appointed as the Khalifa of the Muslimin in the area uh, that were under the control of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Uh, in his time, Islamic Khilafah became divided into two. Hazrat Ali had half in Hijaz and Iraq. Amir Muawiyah radiallahu anhu had Sham and Misr and, and Africa and so on. And when after Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu's shahada, Hazrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu took control, then there was an incident when Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Hazrat Hassan almost got involved in a conflict and seeing the bloodshed which will arise Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu offered to step down in favor of Amir Muawiyah so that the Muslims could have peace amongst them and there will be no more killing and bloodshed and the Muslims could be united and at his hands Allah united as the Prophet sallallahu had prophesied two divisions, two parts of the ummah and this was a great sacrifice by Hazrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu and if he wanted, he could have carried on, and but that would have led to a lot of bloodshed, and who knows what would have happened. But instead, he chose to step down in favor of Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and then the Muslims were united. But Allah then rewarded, Allah then rewarded the sacrifice of Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu uh, by the fact 
uh, that to before the end of time, the man about whom the Prophet prophesied, he will come and he will be a ruler of all the Muslim world. Allah will unite the whole ummah at his hands. But because he will be from the progeny of Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, so in, in that way, Allah rewarded Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He gave up half of the Khilafat. But Allah will give a man from his offspring Khilafat of the whole Muslim world. So the Mahdi will be not from the children of Hazrat Hussein, but from, but not from Banu Hussein, but rather from Bani Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in many, many ahadith has, has made it clear. In one hadith the Prophet said, if there was only law lam yabqa min al-dahr illa yawman, uh, if there remained even only one day, one day left in the life of this world, Allah tawwala Allahu dhalik al Allah will extend that day to such, a, to such an extent uh, that hatta yamlik al-araba, that, that until or so that the Arabs will be ruled over by a man min ahli bayti yuwati ismuhu ismi uh, whose name will be the same as my name, the Prophet said, and wa ismu abihi ismu abi, and the name of his father will be the name same as the name of my father. The Prophet's name was Abdullah. Muhammad, and his father's name was Abdullah. So Muhammad bin Abdullah. So the Mahdi, his own name will be Muhammad, Muhammad, and his father's name will be Abdullah. Uh, Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Qadiani has rejected all these hadiths. So many hadiths. In fact, he is written in volume 14 of Ruhani Khazan. There is a small, uh, small brochure which is, which is which is a part of volume 14. It's entitled Hakikatul Mahdi, the reality of the Mahdi, uh, in which he goes on to say. Mahdi or Masih Maud ke baare mein jo mera aqida aur meri jamaat ka aqida hai. وہ یہ ہے کہ اس قسم کی تمام حدیثیں جو مہدی کے بارے میں ہیں ہرگز قابل وسوق اور قابل اعتبار نہیں ہیں This is page 429 of volume 14 He says My belief and the belief of my jama'ah My followers Is that all the ahadiths Which have been revealed regarding the Mahdi They are all untrustworthy You can't trust any of them And in volume 19 in volume 19, page 140, Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Qadiani has gone on to say that he only, Taidi Torpar, this is page 140, volume 19, Ham wo hadithen pesh karte hain, jo Quran Sharif ke mutabak, aur meri wahi ke maariz nahi hain. He goes, I only present those hadiths which conform to Quran and conform to my revelation. His revelation, the revelation of Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Qadiani, and then he goes on to say, or dusri hadiths ko ham raddi ki tarah phank dete hain. He goes, all other hadiths which don't conform to his inspirations, he goes, I throw them in the dustbin. Can you imagine saying that about hadith of the Prophet sallallahu that just because it, they, it, they don't fit his purpose, and he wants to throw them in the bin. Na'udhu min zalik. Other people, they say, da'if, da'if, and there's another word, we don't need it. Uh, but Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, he says, all the hadiths which don't conform to his, his aspirations, he wants to throw them in the bin. Na'udhu billah min zalik. And there are many, at least 40 sahih hadiths have been narrated. How many? Okay. At least 40. Mawlana Hussain Ahmad Madani Rahimahullah, who was Shaykh al Hadith in Darul Ulum Deoband, for many years, almost 50 years, he taught Hadith. And from those 50 years, 17 years, he taught and lectured on Hadith in front of the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There were two personalities in the history of Islam. Uh, one right in the beginning of the second century of Islam, Imam Malik rahimahullah, he gave dars of Hadith in front of the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah honored uh, Shaykh al-Islam Mawlana Hussain Ahmad Madani, Ustazul Hadith of Darul Ulum Deoband. Uh, he also, he used to teach hadith in Darul Deoband. He migrated from uh, Deoband to Medina, stayed there 17 years teaching hadiths. Then he returned to India to again lecture in Darul Ulum Deoband. While he was in Medina, he wrote and compiled 
a brochure uh, in which he listed 40 sahih ahadiths uh, regarding the, the, the coming of the Mahdi. And hence, uh, it is a part of the Aqidah of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jamaah. There are so many ahadiths and ulama of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jamaah considered to be a mutawatir issue. In other words, it's a unanimously accepted issue. And the Prophet Wasallam, his narrations regarding this subject have been narrated to in, in so many different chains that it is simply not possible to reject them all. So hence the coming of the Mahdi is a mutawatir issue. It forms a part of our aqaid. When, when, when people learn aqidah, they also learn about the Mahdi as well. And this is, this is one of our aqaid. Mirza Ghulam Muhammad Qadiani has rejected all these. The Shias have a different concept of the Mahdi. The Sunnis, Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah, we have a totally different concept of the Mahdi. We believe that the Mahdi, his name, he will be born. His name will be Muhammad. And the name of his father will be Abdullah. Abdullah. The Shias believe that, that he was the 12th Imam who vanished. His son of the 11th Imam. And the 11th Imam is Hassan Askari. The first Imam according to Shia beliefs is Ali, Hassan, Hussein, Ali bin Hussein, Muhammad bin Ali, Imam Jafir Sadiq, Imam Jafir Sadiq's son Musa Kazim, then Ali Raza, Muhammad Taqi, Ali, uh, Ali Naqi, and then Hassan Askri, and then finally uh, the, 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 the 12th Imam who they refer to as Sahibul Asrar and, uh, and, and Imam Al Qayyim. And the Prophet وسلم, said his name will be Muhammad, his father's name will be Abdullah. And at the time when he shall appear, the Muslims will be divided, Muslims will be in problems, hardship, there will be division and chaos in the world, and, and uh, people won't know what to do with regards to their problems and won't know of a solution. And the ulama and the pious people of the time, then they will revert, they will, uh, revert to trying to find the Mahdi, and, fe- and uh, fearing that he be recognized, he will be at the time in Medina, then will, then will proceed towards Makkah, and he will be performing tawaf. And while he will be performing tawaf, and be between Hajri Aswad and Muqam Ibrahim, in that form, in that part of Tawaf, those who've been to Mecca, they will know this is small, small, small distance. He will, in his while in Tawaf between Hajar and Maqam, between Hajar Aswad and Maqam Ibrahim, people Allah will inspire. They will recognize him, and they will accept him as the Mahdi, and there will be a voice from the heavens confirming his identity that he is the Mahdi. And people will then flock from all over the Islamic world. And the first batch to make his bayah in the Haram, in Masjid Haram, in Makkah, will be a group of 313 people. And he will be recognized there and accepted from there when the news will spread. The pious people from Iraq and Sham and throughout the Muslim world will then flock to Makkah to make his bayah. And then he will set about organizing, restructuring the Islamic world and and then eventually Allah will bless him and he will fill the world with justice. And the Prophet Sallallahu he said uh, the Mahdi will stay around in different narrations either for seven years or for eight years or for nine years. At least seven, maximum nine. And he will be a ruler. The Prophet said, Hatta yamlekul Araba. He will be a ruler of the Arabs. He will be a ruler he won't just be a scholar and an imam just in the masjid nobody knows about. Uh, he will be a ruler. He will rule over the people, unite them, organize them, deal over them, and, and, and settle their affairs as it were, their mutual disputes and conflicts. And another thing that will happen in his presence or upon his arrival, the Prophet ﷺ in one hadith said, when he appears, تَنْعَمُ أُمَّتِي نِعْمَةً لَمْ يَنْعَمُوا قَتْ the Ummah will, jo- will enjoy such prosperity that they would have never enjoyed in the history of, of this Ummah. When the Mahdi appears, uh, that, that the Ummah will become very prosperous. And the earth will give up all its goodness. And all the fruits and vegetation and the goodness which is in the earth, in wealth and whatever the earth holds. When the Mahdi appears, initially there will be a rain. 
and it would, that rain will bring barakah and blessings. And because of that rain, mashallah, fruit, vegetation, all forms of goodness uh, will, will then grow and the earth will give up all its goodness. And, subhan- and then as a result of which, the ummah will enjoy such prosperity and such good times that it would have never experienced in its history. And as a result, Allah will also bless him and uh, and he will distribute so much wealth. Hatta wa yahthil mala hathyan. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he will distribute wealth in like in English they say like no man's business. And in his time, whenever people will come and present their needs, and they will and, and a man will say, I am in need. Please give me some. He will open. He will open the treasures and say, Take as much as you like. Uh, take as much as you like. And in his time, um, people will, mashallah, enjoy prosperity and goodness and so on. And after he appears, soon after, Dajjal will appear. Initially, the Mahdi will come. And when he comes, his name will be Muhammad, father's name Abdullah, he will be an Arab, he will be a ruler, he will be recognized between Hajri Aswad, Maqam Ibrahim, people will make, him, will make his bayah and accept him to be a leader, people will then unite upon him, he will set about restructuring, organizing, and mashallah there will be a rain, a rain which will bring barakah, the earth will give up all its goodness and the ummah will enjoy prosperity, the likes of which it has never seen. And then he will fill the world. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Yamla'u al-arda adlan wa qistan kama muliyat zulman wa jawra." When the Mahdi will come, he will fill the world with justice and goodness, as the world would have been filled with oppression and tyranny. And then soon after him, the Jal will appear. And when the Jal will appear, he will roam all over the world, and and cause and cause havoc and fitna. And that will be one one, one big fitna. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, and there has not been any prophet who has not warned his people of the appearance of the jal. Whenever the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned the jal, he used the word appearance. He didn't say he will be born. یہ زور نے کبھی یہ نہیں فرمایا کہ وہ پیدا ہوگا آپ نے فرمایا کہ وہ نکلے گا خروج کرے گا. In other words, he has been born. And he is somewhere, uh, somewhere he is he is tied up in a cave, kept hidden. When Allah will see fit the time for him to be released, he will be released into the world, and he will be such a big fitna, such a big fitna that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself used to seek Allah's refuge uh, from the fitna of the jal. Uh, in other words, he used to teach us that we should also seek Allah's refuge from the fitna of the jal. اللهم إني أعوذ بك من فتنة المحيا والممات وأعوذ بك من فتنة النساء ومن فتنة القبر ومن فتنة المسيح الدجال. These are all different du'as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to make and he used to seek Allah's refuge from. And uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, but I tell you something that no man, no other Prophet has ever told his ummah before. He will have the world kafir written on his forehead and he will be blind from one eye and your Lord is not blind. And he will be such a big fitna. He will the people who believe in him. He will promise to give them Jannah, which will really be Jahannam. And those who refuse him and deny him, he will promise to condemn them to Jahannam, which will really be Jannah. And he will be such a big fitna. He will say to the people, "I am your Lord." And an angel will say, "You lie." And there will be another angel, which will be obviously angels are not visible to us. The first angel will say, you lie, referring to the Jal, you're a liar, but the people won't hear this. The other angel will say, you are telling the truth, referring to the first angel. But everybody will hear the second angel and not the first. So when he says, I am God, the angel will say, you lie. The second angel will say to the first angel, you are speaking the truth, he's a liar. But the people, they will think, that he is saying that voice is confirming the Jal's claim, I am the God. So it will be such a big fitna. He will go to people and say, if I was to raise your parents, will you believe in me? And then shayateen and jinnat will appear in the form of their parents. They won't be his real parents. They will be shayateen, jinnat, appear in the appearance of their parents. And they will say, son, he is, he is God, believe in him. And when people see your parents are there and they're telling you to believe in him, who will deny? 
Allahu Akbar, this will be such a big fitna. Allah will send Isa alayhi salatu wassalam uh, in order to fight this Dajjal. And Isa alayhi salatu wassalam, when he appears before, just before that, uh, Imam the Mahdi or Imam Mahdi, he would he will be in a position to f- there will be there will be sequence of wars between Muslims and non-Muslims, and in the morning, Isa alayhi, uh, Imam Mahdi alayhi, sal- alayhi ridwan will be preparing the Muslim army to fight against the enemies, and when Isa alayhi salatu wassalam shall descend on the eastern minaret in, the, in, in Damascus. And uh, when he comes down from the heavens onto the minaret supported by two angels, the Prophet wasallam he said he will have two pale sheets around him and uh, he will come down to the top of the minaret, that is where the angels will leave him. Then a ladder will be brought for him to bring him down and uh, he will descend. The Muslims will be ready to lead people uh, to pray. Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, when he appears and the Muslims welcome him, the Mahdi, he will offer Isa alayhi salam to lead people in salat, but Isa alayhi salam shall refuse initially and say, no, you lead the people in salat. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when one hadith he mentioned, what will be your condition when Isa alayhi salam comes back to this world, but the Imam will be from amongst you. Uh, Isa alayhi salam, the first prayer he will pray behind the Mahdi and then in, the, in, in subsequent prayers he will also lead because he is Rasulullah, he is a mighty messenger of Allah and so for the people, mashallah, to pray behind Isa alayhi salam and to be with Isa alayhi salam, uh, it will be a great honor in its own way and when Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will be brought down from a, with a ladder from the top of the minaret, uh, people say, well, the angels could have brought him straight down, why did they leave him on top of the minaret? And the reason is, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam is alive in the heavens, when the angels bring him against all the odds, and against all against the worldly means, uh, but when he's brought to this world, then because it is the natural way, it is, it is the proper way, a means of coming down is from a ladder, so for him even a ladder will be brought. As, as to comply with the worldly principles and practices uh, so that Isa Islam will come down on a ladder and then mashallah uh, he will lead the Muslims and Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will say I have been sent specially to kill the Jal and he will chase him and he will chase him to a place called Lud whereby he will then kill him and, and then after that all the people of the book all the people of the book the Jews and the Christians who are sincere, Allah says in the Quran, وَإِمِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لَيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ And there will not remain a person even from the people of the book who will not believe in him before he dies. So when we see, if Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, na'uzu billah, had died as Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani claimed, but we see, the Quran says there will not remain any person from the people of the book who will not believe in him before he dies. But if Isa salam had died in Kashmir, as Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani had claimed, then the people, the people of the book, the Christians and the Jews should have all become Muslim before that happened. But that didn't happen. And this is in the Quran. So it shows that Isa salam has not died. And when Isa alayhi salam shall come, before he dies, all the Jews and the Christians who are sincere, the, the Jews especially who are not sincere with regards to Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, they will be with the Jal and Isa alayhi salam shall deal with them. Others who are sincere, because the Jews, they rejected Isa alayhi salam as well. The Christians elevated him to more than what he ever claimed. So upon the return of Isa alayhi salam, his position and status will be clarified and cleared. So the Jews and the Christian, they are both from the people of the book. Those who are sincere will believe in him. And at his time, Islam will prevail all over the world. And the world will be filled with justice and Islam. And that will happen in the time of Isa alayhi salam. And as well as Isa alayhi salam, the Mahdi will also be by his side. Then Isa alayhi salam shall take control and soon after that the Mahdi or Imam Mahdi alayhi ridwan will pass away and will die. Then Isa alayhi salatu was salam, he will take control and Isa alayhi salam upon his return will also get married. 
he will get married, he will have a family, and some ulama they say when he when his time comes to die, he will die his normal and natural death and be buried next to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So when the Mahdi shall come, uh, he will unite the Muslims. He will at his hands the Muslims will enjoy immense prosperity and goodness. The world will be filled with justice and goodness. And the ummah will jo- enjoy a prosperity that it would have never enjoyed throughout its history. And the Mahdi will be from the descendants of the Prophet ﷺ through Fatima ta'ala anha and, and from Banu Hassan, from the children of Hassan ta'ala anhu, and not through Hussein. And this is what Ali ta'ala anhu said. The Shias believe one of the things that, that uh, Imam Mahdi will do and I have a book here. This is the book of the Shias. It's uh, written by Mullah Baqir Majlisi, who, was, who according to Wikipedia, is one of the most powerful and influential scholars, a uh, Shia scholar of all times. And in he has written one of the things that uh, Imam Mahdi will do, and they call him Sahibul Amr. Sahibul Amr, which means the man of authority when he will come. Because the Mahdi will be from the Prophet Wasallam's family. And being from the Prophet Wasallam's family, he, ought, and he, will, he will respect and show love for the family of the Prophet Wasallam. And the family of the Prophet are not just Fatima and Hassan and Hussein. The Prophet Wasallam's family included all his wives. Because you know, when a person refers to someone's family, and the first person that comes to mind is not the children, but rather the wife. So the Prophet's family that includes the Prophet ﷺ's wives. And Allah says in the Quran that his wives are the mothers of the believers. And Nabiyu awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim wa azwajuhu ummahatuhum. And that the Prophet is very dear to the believers and his wives are the mothers of the believers. So Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she is the mother of the believers. Indeed, yes, she, there was a conflict between Aisha and Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, but that conflict was settled. The differences were over, overcome, and after the, the battle of the Jamal, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said regarding Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, that she deserves and she enjoys the same respect as the mother of the believers now as she enjoyed previously. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala anha, anhu used to respect, respect Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. So when the Mahdi shall come, being a descendant of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, naturally he will also show utmost respect to the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But Mullah Baqir Majlisi in, in Hayatul Qulub, volume 2, page 900, this is the Urdu translation, in which he says, Ali bin Ibrahim نے روایت کی ہے کہ ان کی ایک خیانت عائشہ کا تلہ اور زبیر کے ساتھ امیر المؤمنین سے جنگ کے لیے بسرا جانا تھا because one major one major mistake made by Aisha رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ was the fact that she joined Talha and Zubair رضی اللہ تعالی عنہما uh, in the conflict which they had with Ali رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ اور حضرت صاحب الامر صاحب الامر means the Mahdi. Sahib al Amr, Aisha ko be hukme khuda zinda karenge. Or is khyanat ke sabab had jari karenge. And he said, when the 12th Imam appears, with Allah's will, he will raise Aisha from her grave and then lash her. The Prophet wasallam said, when the Mahdi shall come, he will fill the world with justice and goodness. The Shia say one of the things that the twelfth Imam or the Mahdi will do is raise Aisha again. Nauzubillah. Uh, it has never happened in the entire history of humanity. Only in the hands of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam were a few people raised. Isa alayhi salatu wasalam would go to a grave and say, Qum bi rise in the name of Allah. And then Allah will raise that dead person. Wa mawta bi uh, as Allah commands Isa alayhi salam, O Isa, you tell the people that I raise the dead with the will of Allah. And the, 
Nobody, at nobody else's hand has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala done this. But the Shias, they say, when the Mahdi shall come, he will raise Aisha. And who is Aisha? The most beloved amongst all the people of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amr ibn Asr radiallahu ta'ala in Bukhari there is a narration. Amr ibn Asr, Ya Rasulullah, ayyu nasi ahabbu ilayk. Ya Rasulullah, who is the person that you love the most? From all the people of the world. Who is the most dear to you? Ayyu nasi ahabbu ilayk. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Qala Aisha, Aisha. And then he said, Min rijal Ya Rasulullah, I meant from the men. The Prophet said, Abuha, her father. Uh, from all the people of the world, the person Rasulullah loved the most is Aisha. And then after Aisha, uh, and then f- f- from the men, he loves Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Muhammad bin Hanafiya radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was again one of the sons of Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, after Hassan and Hussein, he was his eldest son. And when Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was, was, uh, was given the crucial blow which led to his shahadat, he summoned his sons Hassan and Hussein and he said to them uh, that, that you look after your brother Muhammad because you know that you know your father loves him. And he is referred to as Muhammad Akbar. Ali radiallahu ta'ala had three sons whom he named Muhammad. Muhammad Akbar, Muhammad Awsat, Muhammad Asghar. All together he had 14 sons. Uh, 14 sons. I've mentioned their names on a number of occasions before. Many people who claim to love Ali radiallahu ta'ala and they call themselves Shiani Ali. Even most of them won't know their names. But inshallah we'll tell them their names. Uh, the names of the sons of Ali. How many sons? 14. Hassan, Hussein, Abdullah, Ubaidullah, Muhammad Akbar, Muhammad Awsat, Muhammad Asghar. And then Jafar, Abbas, Yahya, Aoun. How many is that? Eleven. 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 Remains three. Abu Bakr, Omar, and Usman. That makes fourteen. Uh, so because Ali radiallahu ta'ala used to love and respect Abu Bakr and Omar and Usman, that is why he kept the names of his own sons, Abu Bakr, Umar, and Usman. So it is the sunnat of Ali radiallahu ta'ala to name your children. Abu Bakr and Umar and Usman. And but from his sons after Hassan and Hussein, the eldest was Muhammad bin Hanafiya, as he's known. And his mother, his mother was such that his mother was given as uh, she was captured in one of the battles uh, uh, that Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala no, fought against Musaylma Kazab. And when she was brought to Medina, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala no, seeing her, he offered her to Hazrat Ali. Uh, he offered her to Hazrat Ali. So if Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu had any grudge with Hazrat Abu Bakr, would he have accepted his presence? <laughs> uh, no. And then when in the time of Hazrat Umar, the Persians, the Persians were, were, uh, were conquered and many of their captives were brought to Medina. Uh, in one of, those, uh, one of those captives was the princess of Persia. Her name was Shahrbanu. And when she was brought, Umar radiallahu ta'ala, anu, when he was made aware, he offered the princess of Persia to the prince of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hazrat Hussein. And although his own son Abdullah bin Umar was a young man as well, but he said no, and she is more deserving for the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that Umar radiallahu ta'ala anu, used to treat Hazrat Ali and his family well. So did Abu Bakr and so did Usman radiallahu ta'ala. Anu. And Imam Mahdi will be from the uh, and I was, uh, Muhammad bin Hanfiya. He asked his father Ali radiallahu ta'ala anu, and he said, "Saaltu abi an ayyun nas khairun baad al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam." He said, "I asked my father Ali, who is the best man after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and you know what Hazrat Ali said, Abu Bakr. Then he said, "Summa man? Who then?" Qala Umar. Wa khashitu an yaqula Usman, faqul tu summa anta." He goes, Ma ana illa rajulun min al muslimin When Muhammad bin Hanafiya, one of the sons of Hazrat Ali, he asked his own father, Ali radiallahu anhu, who is the best man after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Hazrat Ali said, Abu Bakr. And then Umar. And then when his own son thought, he said, I didn't want him to say Usman. So I said, then you? And then Ali radiallahu anhu said, no, I was just an ordinary man. Uh, so Ali radiallahu ta'ala had all the love and respect for Abu Bakr. He had the same respect for Aisha radiallahu ta'ala. Anha. But the Shias they say, when the Mahdi comes, one of the first things he will do is to raise Aisha. Na'udhu billah min thalik, na'udhu billah min thalik. And he will lash her for her part and role 
in the conflict with Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, which was which was the conflict in itself was a sad incident, but Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu overlooked it and uh, he forgave Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha for what happened and then after that he used to treat her very respectfully and Hazrat Hassan and Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu continued when Hazrat Hassan and Hussein came back to Medina after Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was martyred and Hazrat Hussein gave up after six months in favor and he stepped down in favor of Amir Muawiyah and then he one of the conditions of the truce was that the Prophet's family will be allowed to live freely wherever they want and but they chose to from Kufa to return to Medina so while they were there in Medina Hazrat Aisha radiallahu anhu was alive and so they continued showing respect to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. they used to respect her and but in the books of the Shias, uh, you know, along, uh, along with much other, uh, with much has been mentioned, their disrespect to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. But, but the Mahdi alayhi rizwan, may Allah be immensely pleased with him when he comes and when he appears, uh, if we are alive, if any one of us is alive, and obviously it will be very difficult times. Many people think, oh, if the Mahdi comes or Isa alayhi salam comes, it will be nice to join them. But Allah knows when they appear, the times will be very severe and the times will be very tough. And for us to make such claims, you know, it's easy to make those claims. But when, when those times come, they'll be very severe and testing times. We should pray to Allah that Allah save us from such fitness. Uh, as the Prophet ﷺ used to seek Allah's refuge from these fitness, fitness of Dajjal and all other fitness. We should also seek Allah's refuge from the fitna of, uh, of what is to come. May Allah Rabbul Alameen Jalla Wa'ala have mercy upon us and grant us the right understanding. A lot of people make a lot of claims. Uh, Mirza Qadiani made all these claims and he, may, and, he and, and if you look at what <laughs> in all his books on the front, uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, Masih Ma'ud wa Mahdi, Mahdi Ma'ud the promised Messiah and the rightly guided man. Uh, but if he had been the rightly guided man the Prophet Wasallam he said, he will be recognized when he will be between Hajr Aswad and Maqam Ibrahim. His name will be Muhammad, his father's name will be Abdullah. Um, but Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qad, his own name in volume 13, page 258, Kitab al Bariya, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani says, My Lord, Mere Khudare, Mera Naam Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani Rakka. He says, my, my Lord has named me Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani. The Prophet said his name will be Muhammad, his father's name Abdullah. He, 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 he accepts, acknowledges that Allah gave him the name Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani. His father's name was Ghulam Murtaza. The Prophet ﷺ spoke about the coming of the Mahdi, whose name will be Muhammad bin Abdullah, and as well as that, the return of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, Isa ibn Maryam. Isa, the son of Maryam, Maryam, the mother of Isa alayhi salam. But Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani's mother's name was? Chiragh Bibi. Uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, his mother Chiragh Bibi, his father Ghulam Murtaza, Imam Mahdi, his name Muhammad bin Abdullah, Isa alayhi salam, Isa ibn Maryam. No, no similarity whatsoever. The Prophet said he will be recognized between Hajr Yasud Muqam Ibrahim. People will make bayat on his hands. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani went nowhere near Mecca. When the people said to him, well why don't you go and, and perform Hajj and go to Mecca, perhaps people will recognize you there. And he said, these ulama are very naughty. <laughs> you know, because they know I'm a wanted man. If I go there, people will capture me and they will kill me. They want me to be killed. Uh, the Mahdi will be recognized there. He will be accepted there. He will be sworn in as it were to the opposed of Khilafat. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani went nowhere near. Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, he shall return on the minaret. So when people said to him, well, the Prophet said he will come down on the minaret. But you were born, you have lived in Qadian. He said, well, let's build a minaret. <laughs> <laughs> he started, in 1906, he, he initiated the project of building the, the, the minaret of the Messiah. They called it Minaratul Masih. And he collected funds, collected so many funds, so much, so many funds, that the minaret could have been built many times over. And but so the work was started and Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani deliberately delayed 
its construction so that he, he could collect more and more money and in before the work could be started uh, he passed away and then they started building and the minaret of the Messiah Minaratul Masih wasn't complete until 1914 and he died on the 26th of May 1908 and he said well let's build this mineral so I can go up and then come down <laughs> but that's not what the prophet had said the prophet said he will come down from the minaret <laughs> and, uh, well, <laughs> and the prophet said when he come, when Isa Islam comes down he will be wearing two pale sheets and he said these two pale sheets imply two severe illnesses uh, one of the lower part of the body the other of the upper part of the body the lower part of the body is I suffer he says in his own words and this is mentioned this in many places in his in his writings he says the lower part is a, is a severe diabetes as a result of which he needs to go to the toilet hundred times a day and the upper part of the the, uh, the upper sheet is he's, he's used to suffer from hysteria and suffer from blackouts severe headaches and so on and uh, and so on our ulama the poets in in one in one wonderful nasheed they've written a, 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 po- uh, a wonderful couplet about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, qadam qadam pe barkate, nafas nafas pe rahmate. Wherever the Prophet would go, every step he would take, there would be baraka, there would be rahmat. Qadam qadam pe barkate, nafas nafas pe rahmate. Every breath he would breathe, every person he would see, Allah, you know, Allah will bless the people. قدم قدم پہ برکتیں نفس رفس پہ رحمتیں جہاں جہاں سے وہ شفیع آسیاں گزر گیا wherever the prophet passed by he left a trail of goodness برکت and رحمت جہاں نظر نہیں پڑی وہاں ہے رات آج تک wherever his gaze did not fall it's still dark and the world is still filled with darkness wherever his gaze did not reach وہی وہی سہر ہوئی جہاں جہاں گزر گیا you know سہر means the morning the morning right. when the before before the sun rises the dark, the crack of dawn and he goes wherever the prophet sallallahu passed by illuminated the world so wherever the beloved prophet of allah went he left a trail of noor baraka goodness but mirza ghulam ahmad qadiani he used to go to the toilet every 5 minutes so wherever he went he left a trail of urine ha ye tajanda gaya mutarda hi gaya subhanallah so the mahdi so the Mahdi, he will, Allah will bless him, he will be from the family of the Prophet wasallam, and he will live, he will be a ruler amongst the Arabs. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani never ever had an opportunity to be a ruler of any town. In fact, he spent, he spent a lot of his early life going backwards and forwards to courts. Uh, fighting you know, his, the claims for the, the, the land that they used to own. And in one particular in one particular case that the Muslims filed against Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani, he swore, he gave his word, he gave his word in, in, in the front of the judge, never ever to challenge Muslims. Never ever to challenge Muslims. And he vowed and he, and he repented for all the wrong that he had done. And he offered, in, uh, he gave his pledge in front of the judge that he will never ever challenge Muslims again if he was a messiah and a good man and if he felt he was obliged to propagate his himself and his truth uh, would a prophet ever say no I'm not going to preach again <laughs> Allah says to the Prophet وسلم, Ya your Rasul Ballig Ballig Maunzila Ilaika Mir Rabbik you carry on preaching Alladina you Balliguna Risalat illah wa Yakshona Wala Yakshona Adan illallah those who preach Allah's Allah's message they fear no one but Allah how can a prophet say no I won't preach again but Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani in front of the judge in Gurdaspur he said it is I, I repent I will never ever challenge Muslims again so the, the real Messiah the real Mahdi has yet not come when he will come he will come, the world will know him. When Isa alayhi salam comes, the world will know him. And the world has not got to know Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani as well, but not as the Mahdi and the Messiah, but as a liar. May Allah save us from his fitna.